Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome back to Blue Place Ashen. Last time we did work with Isla to hunt down Aki, and we did some exploring around the Whispers, and we went to a cave that was just a little bit too high level for us at this time. Now today's episode is going to be a little bit differently. Currently, I'm actually recording this as post commentary. I did record a live commentary, or at least I thought I had, but turns out my microphone either was disabled or the recording software that I use, I use OBS by the way, just failed to pick it up. So here I am doing post commentary, going to do my best to remember what my train of thoughts were when I was playing this, but also just doing my best to carry on conversation with all of you. You can see I still have my score there in that cave. We do have this current quest with Jokel to look for Kala along the shores of the Whispers, but we also still have a quest with Isla down there. So I think we'll make our way down to that area and see if we can complete more than one quest. I do have another idea though, and that is I want to finally climb those rocks to try and get to that large diasora. Now we do have some talismans to sort through, so let's actually take a look and see what I want to switch out. Nothing at this time, although by the end of this episode I will have some new ones that I can certainly give a try to. Taking a look at the gear that I'm using, you can see I have almost nearly completely empty in my inventory and I have the standard single-handed and two-handed weapon that we've already been using for a little while yet but let's go ahead and warp down to this traveling ritual stone we also do get to encounter some more co-op which is definitely a lot of fun so you can see the diasaur the matriarch diasaur up at the very top certainly going to be one of our destinations but there's still some loot down along the bottom you can see here that we do have Jokel with us because we are going after his quest. Although he will become another player relatively soon. Now as I'm kind of showing out the landscape, let us just discuss a few things that we've talked about both in my videos and in the comments. A lot of you have somewhat agreed with me in terms of the loot design. It's great that there's so many places to explore. It's great that loot is just so prevalent. But the problem is, because of the severe lack of loot quality, it does tend to almost dissuade you from exploring. Which is a shame, because it's such a well-crafted and beautiful world I want to explore, but the loot itself isn't what's dragging me. Oh, Jokel is already down. Definitely time to rescue my friend here. Gotta watch this Einar and watch this giant axe-wielding individual. Swing and a couple misses. Fortunately, at this point, once I have Okoto's Guile built up, I can almost spam R1 to deal with just about every enemy. So now we can get our friend Jokel up. But I do have to now remember, I have to be very careful because if he goes down again, he is dead. Now you can see that because Jokel is using Okoto's Guile, this is another player. This is one of the ways that you can tell. At this point, I am trying to call him over so he can give me a boost. Let's see how long it takes him to get over here. Not too long at all. He is a seasoned professional after all. This is me trying to make my way up to the matriarch. But unfortunately, it seems that maybe this isn't quite the right way. Although there was another assist climb here. If I can get it to prompt again. Or I can just follow suit. I like where his head's at. Get ourselves the broken curved hatchet, a new weapon. And from here, I do look, it does look like I have a couple of options, excuse me. Nice plunge attack there by my co-op friend, Jokel. Still just taking a look for those assisted opportunities now that ding right there I'll have to get another look at my partner to see if he's now transformed back into the actual NPC but without even trying to I have now located Kala blood of my blood I see the curse stirring around him he hears our voices strongly now a relic was lost 
a curse to Baal. Long I searched, finding many treasures, but never the veil. I failed, but you must not. Search the ruins upon the cliffs that gaze across the sea. You seek the umbral veil. I thought it lay there. While I lived, I sensed power in that spot. So we've located Kala. We just learned about this umbral veil. So it sounds like there's a bit more to it. Now, at this point, it tells me I have to return to Vagrant's Rest. Now, this is another little nitpick that I have about the game. If I'm traveling with Jokel and I've just completed one of the legs of his quest, why is it I have to travel back to Vagrant's Rest to tell him about what I've just encountered, especially when he was standing theoretically right there with me? By the way, that was a great suicide right to the face. It seems like I could just lean over and say, Hey, Jokel, did you catch all that? And then we can move on with the next stage of his quest. But unfortunately, this game is designed in such a way that after almost every step, you need to head back to Vagrant Rest. It does kind of break up the continuity, the immersion, a little bit, at least in my opinion. So since that clearly was not the way up to the Matriarch, there must be another option, but... Still some loot to be had here, get some fire kelp, which some of you did point out rightfully in the comments that fire kelp has a couple of uses. Number one, apparently later on there will be some sort of crafting mechanic with the fire kelp and some other odds and ends, but also there are some talismans that will proc if you're below a certain HP threshold. And using the fire kelp is a really good way of monitoring that HP yourself. You can actually reduce it if need be. This Ayanara was definitely getting the better of me. Let's take him out with my good co-op friend. Some loot there in the distance. I can't resist that, of course. Let's try and hope, uh, hopefully get one of these attacks. Oh, blocked one, then took another one square on the chin. Gotta be careful here because these attacks, I mentioned it before, it does seem that they have some form of hyper armor. So once they've started to wind up, they're locked in. Heading out here closer to the docks. There's a Craven Remnant. Always happy to see those. Although I have to say, the traveling ritual stones are fairly common. And here's where I realized that I should switch to Isla because we still have to locate Flokir. So if I switch to Isla, I can stay down here before heading back to Vagrant's Rest. Now, the problem is it does look like that canceled my co-op session. I do have to say, as much grief as I've given co-op, the integration itself is seamless, and I very much appreciate that. As soon as I switched to Isla in my menu just a moment ago, that co-op partner was disconnected, but he never would have realized that on his end. He would have just continued as is. Let's see if I can get the shield bash here. It does seem like some of the shield-wielding enemies recover so quickly that even a light attack does not get through their shield after you've broken their defenses. There we go. He is dead. So now we're slowly climbing up this large monument. You can see some loot in the distance. And I have to say, since this is post-commentary, I was pretty surprised when I got to the top. Pleasantly so. But definitely surprised. Oh, got a spearhead. Luckily, this guy just missed me. Let's see if I can knock him off the edge. Or actually have him knock himself off the edge, I suppose. There we are. No Scoria, so he actually did survive that fall. But we have seen in this game that fall damage is pretty reduced. A few enemies here, though. So I kind of stood back a little bit. I do have these two pike-wielding enemies with shields that I had to deal with. Okoto's Guile doing a number of hits. Excellent. Got them dead, which is good because I do have this big guy and a couple of the smaller ones. Bait that large jump attack. Still took a little bit of residual damage from the splash damage as he came down. All right. Two more enemies have joined the fight, but these guys should be taken out in a single hit. So far, so good. Especially with Okoto's Guile at max. I will say, as much as I'm loving Okoto's Guile, I do end up with a new relic, a new talisman, that's going to take its place here in just a little bit. 
Even though I know where my destination is, I did want to scour a bit for loot. There's still a lot to be had. Get a Harkening Club on this corpse. Blessed with a Runic Blasphemy. Taking a look at the two weapons I've got the curved hatchet, a guillotine shaped hatchet, the counterweight at the bottom balances the head nicely. Feel how comfortably that sits in your hand, doesn't it just make you want to chop something? And then the club states a long handled monster of metal and stone, its runes inscribed with the darkest of messages. The meaning of these runes is, uh, well, you could read the rest by Salarin. Probably something left best unknown. I am now at the same level as the Diasora at the Henge of the Matriarch. But this is what I wasn't expecting. She wants absolutely nothing to do with us. And here I was thinking that I just rescued your pup, you'd be happy to see me. They actually explain why she's not so happy that we're actually climbing her monument. But in order to get that explanation, we do have to get a little bit closer. So I thought maybe this is going to be a game of just running from pillar to pillar, but turns out there is another, more simplistic solution. And that is, I could see that archway on the right. Now there is an item directly in her path that I'll be honest, I did not get. I'm not sure if it's something of grave importance. If it is, I can always make the climb back up. But for now, I just decided to follow the path to get up to her to see if I could maybe either strike up a dialogue or maybe there's something hidden directly underneath her. I was actually nervous that I couldn't make this jump, but my co-op partner, my NPC partner rather, offered this assist climb. Otherwise, I would have turned around and tried to look for another way. This creature is just it's so well designed. I love it. It, it. The dinosaur is one of my favorite creatures now in a video game period. It seems like it belongs in, I don't know, maybe Zelda, The Wind Waker, which is a fantastic Zelda game if you've never had the opportunity to play it. But now climbing this final ladder, I see a nest with some broken eggs and actually, there's an NPC down here who seemingly has a quest for us. Well, not really so much a quest, but why don't we have a listen? You draw the, the, the line between light and dark, life and death. That line has led you here. So please, take this and continue your drawing. Guardians Pact. This is what's going to end up replacing Okoto's Guile. Won't be pleased that her pup has chosen you over her. I'd lead a hasty retreat if I were you. Before her jealousy gets bitey. And there's the reason that she's not happy to see us. Her pup chose us over her. Then again, I did rescue the pup from the clutches of Garran, but... Still, I understand the mother's jealousy. So this is where I was trying to see if I could actually learn more about this Guardian's Pact, but it seems that the talismans can only be viewed back at Vagrant's Rest when you're actually at the crafting table. Otherwise, you can only see the ones that you do have equipped already. Again, nitpicking, but I would like to see the ability to view those because it seems that they're in my inventory anyway. Looking around for more places maybe I could drop down to, but definitely decided against it. Seems that maybe that would have been a little bit foolhardy to try. Slowly climbing down each ladder. Didn't want to take unnecessary fall damage if I could help it. I can see that one item over there by the big guy. We will be getting that before the day is through. And Isla was down here somewhere. I saw her doing some damage. Oh, there she is. But here I am taking some of my own. Need to be very careful here. This guy will do some massive damage. Oh, 
and now I'm waiting on Isla to see if she can maintain. Based on that last attack, I'm not so sure. And the fact that she insists on using these charge attacks and then decides, hey, at low health, why don't I go and try and revive Silvarius? Better luck next time. But that is okay. We do have over 8,000 Scoria, so we will rush over there and get that and then make our way back. But that's going to do it for this area. So we have a lot more to explore. And now we have to go and try and locate Flokir's toolkit, which probably means tracking down Flokir himself. Dealing as quickly with these torch-wielding enemies as I can. Letting Isla take the brunt if need be, but nope, looks like we're okay here. Already got Ukoto's Guile back to full. And I know it's just on the other side of this ridge. But can't make the jump, so we will just rush around. Take some more of that flat splash damage. Excuse me, not flash damage. Flash damage is something else entirely. That's when you're actually attacked by the DC superhero, the Flash. Okay, just a few more enemies in between us and our Scoria. In fact, there it is. And once I have that, I have no more reason to stay here, so let's just beat a hasty retreat. At this point in the game, 8,000 Scoria is still nothing to scoff at. And since I do like to change out my talisman and those cost a minimum of a thousand apiece, don't want that to go to waste. Although, admittedly, I did leave over 5,000 in that cave from last time, but let's just not bring that up. I know that there's at least one item here that I do want to get. Wow, that was a lot of damage. And there are a lot of enemies now coming our way. Let's build back that Okoto's Guile if we can. I actually am really glad that I came over here for this item. Something that I had asked if it was possible to get, one person did let me know that yes, it is possible, I'm just not going to tell you where. Fortunately, I wouldn't say I'm thorough, but my exploring did pay off and I got the pickaxe. I don't know what it is about the pickaxes, but even in the Souls games, I've always really enjoyed using them. Maybe it's just something about using an, an unconventional weapon. Something that shouldn't even be used as a weapon. So at this point, we are going to start making our way over towards Flokir, or at least his toolkit, according to the map. First, we have some of these glowing iron ore to deal with. Who are just jumping all over the place. In the dog world, we would call these zoomies. If you're not sure what a zoomie is, it's worth a look up. I do really enjoy the heavy attack of this axe. That jump attack does seem to do a lot of damage, plus it's delightful to look at. It's a nice flourish. Getting close enough to the Ritual Stone to top off my health, get my gourds back. And you can see straight ahead we have a number of those towers with the statues. We're going to be talking about those here in just a little bit. Still trying to see if I can look at my talismans or if I had any new relics. Currently, I do not, but it looks like the marker is bringing us a lot closer to this water. Which makes sense. Isla has talked about a lot of her friends and family members who have been fishermen in the past. So it would make sense that we'd find Flokir near the water as well. Some more of these glowing statues. Even out to sea, there's glowing statues with items nearby, but no way to get to them as of right now. Isla just dispatching an enemy I didn't even know existed, but I did see Flokir up here, right on this ledge. So let's see if we can get his toolkit from him. Hold on. You look familiar. Where have I... That's it. You're the one who toppled Ake. Well, I could certainly use someone of your talents right now. So let's haggle. Flokir's the name, and tinkering's my trade. Inventions for the enlightened. Catchy, right? <laughs> but I can't do any tinkering now. 
because some accursed miscreant has stolen my tools. I stashed them away to keep them safe. But this light-fingered louse must have seen me. The trail leads uphill through a corb hunting ground. More corbs than I can handle alone. Hmm. So his toolkit has been stolen. Flokir has now joined our town, which is fantastic. But he mentioned that it was stolen, and now the trail will lead up through a corb hunting grounds. So taking a look, it doesn't seem like the toolkit was too far away, but, well, you'll see here momentarily that the toolkit's a little bit out of reach for the time being. We just did just pick up some sapient moss. We're going to get several more of those throughout the episode. Just killing some of these enemies. Don't need to necessarily fight all of them if I don't have to. Scoria is not very good. In fact, the enemies that are wielding the pickaxes and the other tools, they give a single Scoria per kill. Definitely not worth it. These enemies, on the other hand, these can still be pretty valuable to farm. You can see 130 for minimal effort. I can deal with that. But it looks like, according to the compass marker, we are not too terribly far. It looks like they're somewhere near those statues. Surprise attack always catches me off guard, hence the name Surprise Attack. Fortunately, we finally got Isla joining us again, and it does look like it is another player. So we have some more co-op action. This should be fun. I have heard that resting at a ritual stone will cause your co-op partner to disconnect from your world, but going back and refilling your health does not. So that's what I just did there. Huge damage there. Need to be careful. Really should be topping off with my gourd since I just refilled it. There we are. So with this little ruins over here, I thought that maybe this was actually where I needed to head in order to find the toolkit. Because he did say that the path led uphill and this was seeming to go uphill. Now I do see that Isla's offering help, but I did have my own path here and I could see some items. So we get a medium Scoria stash. Very welcome sight. Love getting 2,500 Scoria at a time. Love that crashing sound effect. So I continue to climb, hoping it's going to lead me around those pillars. And I'm really not sure why I'm still trying to attack when these enemies are. Especially, I'm not even using something that stuns. So it would make sense that I wouldn't be able to knock them out of that animation. There's another sapient moss. Here, I actually used my head. Got out my spear, my time-worn spear. Took out that suicider before he could even get close to my good friend Isla. Still a few more items that I can see. Another medium Scoria stash. We have another Sapien Moss, which is good. I do want to upgrade a lot more weapons. And right now I'm thinking, hmm, I didn't actually see any other path that led anywhere else. There might be some more items, and I'm sure there are if I dig around a little bit. In fact, I am going to go up here because I thought I saw one more. But now I'm looking at these towers. And I noticed something. These glowing meditating statues. I have already commented that there seems to be some relation with spears because I often found them near spearheads. And now I'm finding them atop these towers, all of which have spears thrown in their general direction. In fact, it doesn't even seem to be a general direction. It seems like they're aiming at the statues. So I still do believe there is a connection, even though, I'll be honest, I haven't made that connection yet. And here is where I get truly stumped. And I'm going to tell you there is going to be a cut here in just a moment, because I spent upwards of 20 minutes trying to get through these ruins. And frankly, I never did. I actually had to reach out to a friend of mine who was further in the game, and he finally let me in on the fact that I cannot bypass it. So... 
I did a little cut there and I went and I read Floker's message to see was there any clue, anything that would indicate maybe there's a way around. And it did say that if you follow his trail and go uphill through the Corp grounds, that's where you'll find the stash. So once again, I head back to the area that I was just in, trying desperately to find that one path. You can see I do have Jokel with me. And Jokel is wearing wings. Hmm. And actually, now that I think about this, why do I have Jokel with me? I'm still under the cash quest, which is technically... Isla's, although I guess maybe now the cash belongs to Flokir, and Flokir can't join me because he does seem to be injured. Maybe that's why. Maybe I'm answering my own question. But this is another player character, and he has wings, and, well, frankly, I want them. It turns out I actually have them, but you'll see that in just a couple minutes when we head back to Vagrant's Rest. I'm just desperately scanning, and again, this is after a solid 20 minutes of exploration to absolutely no avail until Ulibufu, you've seen him in the comments, he let me know I have to do the main story quest in order to get past. But there's another item there, so let's see if we can't find our way there before we finally throw in the towel. Sure enough, not too difficult. There is a medium scoria stash, and I did see a couple other items already off in the distance. I am certainly not going to be getting every item in this game. There's just so much to locate. But if I miss anything important, do feel free to let me know in the comments, and I will certainly backtrack. But if I'm going to make a long climb for a small scory stash or a spearhead, frankly, I could do without. But at this point, I did give in. I ran back to the Ritual Stone so I could go back to Vagrant's Rest. I have a number of things to do here. So the first thing that I'd like to do is actually make our way over to Jokel. Indeed. If Kala speaks the truth, then Vaughn and Ahu share her fate. They are out there somewhere. Shadows hungering for their stolen rest. I have to find this umbral veil if I'm to free my kin from the shadows. Yet, so much time has passed since Ball went searching for it along the cliff tops. It's a stone cold trail, but the only one we have to follow. If Ball did find the veil, it might be with her still. So we got more health, we got a new talisman, and we got the ability to trade small scoria stashes, which I found really interesting. We'll actually go look at a trader here in just a little bit, but first, I want to run over to Isla. Just kidding, apparently I decided I needed to know exactly why I could trade for those stashes. There's those. So, sure enough, for 300 scoria... I could trade for a small scoria stash, which is interesting because a small scoria stash only yields 250. So there needs to be a reason why I'm able to purchase these small scoria stashes for more than what they're worth. Hmm. So I kind of hypothesized that eventually there's going to be something else that I can trade for small scoria stashes. And if I don't have any in my inventory, but I have this scoria saved up, then I can buy them to trade for others. It's an interesting internal trading mechanism. Takes a little getting used to. A tinker without tools is like a lamp without fuel. A dull affair indeed. If we could track this thief down, recover my kit, I'd be happy to do some tinkering for you. I'm not really sure what Flokir, pardon me, sorry about your face, I'm not sure what Flokir is going to actually be able to tinker for us, but I'm rather looking forward to it. And now we can head over once again with the pottery. Now we can head over to Isla. Taking a look though at what the next step for Jokel's quest is, and it looks like it is well beyond where we just got stuck for Flokir. Death. We gained the Tinker! Let's not let Flokir know we were after his gear. Might get a bit missed about that. Back to this troublesome Fiske fella, eh? Him and his ugly armaments. He's shacked up with a bunch of shadow lovers in the Twisted Canyon. Cooks up all sorts of nasty for my kin if he's arming those Darklings, too. We gotta find Fiske and put an end to those wily weapon workings of his. So for turning in that step of the quest for Isla, we did get more health, we got another talisman, and now we can actually trade for Sapien Moss. 
but we also have to hunt down Fiske. So taking a look at the map and yeah, once again, well beyond where I just got stuck. So even if I hadn't reached out and asked for some assistance, hopefully eventually I would have put two and two together that frankly I need to do the next step of the story quest in order to bypass those ruins. Then again, more obvious things have been missed by yours truly. Hmm. But we did get some more talismans, so I would love to stop and take a look at those, as well as that Guardian's Pact, which we haven't had an opportunity to look at. So we did get Last Stand, which gives us an increase to damage the lower our health is. So again, just what I was talking about with the Fire Kelp. So under 75%, I get a 20% boost. Under 50%, a 50% boost. And under 25%, an 80% boost. But that's a lot a lot of HP loss. It's a lot of damage gained, but this is kind of the red tear stone ring equivalent from Dark Souls. And given how I've been playing, I don't know if Last Stand's really going to be for me. Now here is the Guardian's Pack. This is the brand new center talisman. This is an interesting one because it gives you a scoria gain of 25% if the wings are broken. The wings that we just saw Jokel wearing but it offers damage reflection if the wings are full. So while broken, you gain more scoria. Once fully grown, you reflect a portion of your damage taken. Now, I do put this on, and the wings are noticeably broken. I don't know how they get repaired. I don't know if that's something that just happens over time, or if this is something like the Egg Parasite from Dark Souls 1, where the longer you wear them and the more scoria you absorb, the faster they grow, or if maybe we need to have them repaired. Maybe by Flokir, he's a tinkerer. Maybe this is something he would like to do. All I know is that they look pretty cool. I'm going to miss Yokoto's Guile. I'm going to miss that damage increase, but I will welcome that 25% Scoria gain. Speaking of Scoria gain, I do have some to spend, so let's see what we can go do in terms of upgrading. So taking a look at the weapons that I'm currently using, the Fanged Axe and the Feather Club, I had to make a decision here. It is a more modest gain with the Fanged Axe to bring this from Force to Action Fuse than I would have gotten with the Feather Club. I haven't really been using the Feather Club, but I would like to use it more because the stun should prove useful, especially against some of those larger heavy hitting enemies. But at the same time, I really like having the fanged axe. Well, there we go. I made my decision. I went with the feather club. Hopefully that locks me into using it a little bit more. Not really loving the armor and wings combo, but that's something I should be changing up in between episodes. But on that note, that is going to do it for this episode of Blue Plays Ashen. I hope you're all enjoying the series, and I hope you're all getting a chance to enjoy this game on your own as well. Next time, we will be starting with that main quest and trying to track down Amuren and hopefully gaining access to those ruins so I can perform all the rest of the side quests because I'm having a lot of fun completing all of those. But that will all wait until next time. And I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time.